Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Jatin, and uh, I'm from Motila Loswal AMC. I take care of uh, uh, ETF and index fund uh, strategies at uh, Motila Loswal AMC. Today, we are going to talk about uh, latest development, which were, which came in from SEBI. Uh, we are waiting for few participants to join in, and we'll start the session in another uh, five minutes, uh, exactly at uh, sixteen ten. That is. Uh, uh, for uh, four o'clock and ten minutes, we'll uh, we we thank you for your patience and we'll start the session uh, very soon.
Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, this is Jatin from Motilal Oswal uh, passive team. I take care of ETFs and index fund strategies uh, uh, here. And I have with me uh, Anuj Desai, who is part of our research team, uh, who also takes care of uh, ETFs and index fund at uh, uh, Motilal Oswal AMC. Uh, so today we are going to talk about the latest development uh, which came in on la in last week uh, from CB. Uh, let us first see that how so far uh, ETFs and index fund uh, have uh, 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 you know have uh, started or have progressed. Uh, hope my screen is visible. If someone can uh, give the thumbs up. Yeah. Thank you. So, uh, so in last uh, 10 years, ETFs and index funds have grown tremendously, not only in terms of AUM, but uh, if you look at the number of funds which were available uh, uh, five years or maybe 10 years ago, those were very limited number of funds which are available in India. But in last, especially in last five years, the AUM as well as number of products which are available in Indian market have uh, grown tremendously. Uh, in 2013, uh, there was roughly about 15,000 crore of AUM which were tra uh, passively tracking some of uh, some or other indices. At the end of April 2022, this AUM has uh, uh, crossed 5 lakh crores uh, uh, in Indian market. Uh, this particular uh, this particular uh, growth was triggered mainly by a couple of reasons. Uh, basically, SEB came out with a mutual fund uh, uh, rationalization where there was a proper categorization and uh, mutual fund has to uh, uh, run the scheme as per their uh, mandate. Apart from that, SEB also mandated uh, uh, all the scheme to benchmark their performance from price return to total return index. Uh, this uh, uh, this led to the overall uh, uh, you know growth of ETFs and index fund or passive funds in India. Uh, after that, uh, retirement funds like EPFO, pension funds, etc., started investing into uh, were mandated to invest into uh, equity market, and many of them actually started investment uh, into uh, by way of ETFs and index fund. Uh, if you look at broadly look at the uh, uh, ETFs, uh, the the recent uh, uh, development which has come in from the CB side uh, in last week, that particular circular or that development is majorly covering three aspects. One is about the market making framework of ETFs which were formerly missing. Uh, so far since the development of ETFs in India. Apart from that, in terms of performance, that is tracking error, tracking difference, etc., SEB has streamlined uh, these particular aspects by way of uh, this circular. And plus, one of the uh, another major uh, coverage is in terms of debt-oriented ETFs and index fund, which will be covered by uh, uh, my colleague Anuj. So I'll talk about first two points very uh, quickly. Uh, uh, as, as name suggests, because exchange traded funds are tradable on the exchange, one of the most important criteria while uh, selecting or while investing into ETF is the volume which is happening on the market or the turnover which is happening of the on the market. This also helps in reducing the bid, ask, bid and ask spread. That is the narrower gap between the INAV or the intrinsic value, fair value of the ETF at that point of time and the trading price. Uh, if you broadly look at the overall development of ETF turnover on the exchange uh, in, in, in March 2013, 
only 50 crore worth of etfs were traded on the nac and bse put together which has uh, now grown to almost uh, uh, 10 times on a daily basis so currently if you look at almost 500 crore of uh, etfs including debt etf gold etf fixed income etf international etfs are traded on the market this has uh, somewhere helped investor to get the better pricing or better trading price uh, which is uh, close to their uh, inav or their fair value however uh, still lot of there are lot of challenges which uh, etfs are facing for the further development uh, of this particular se- segment for example uh, inav which which is nothing but a uh, indicative net asset value or a real time nav at at any point of time so typically when you invest into etf suppose if market opens at about 10000 point typically the nav of that particular etf will be close to somewhere around 100 for example and if market by 12 o'clock if, mar- if market goes down to 9000 point then nav will also move to uh, the indicative nav will also move to uh, 90 rupees and if market goes up to let's say 11000 point then the uh, uh, inav will also move to 110 this is one of the very important uh, uh, aspect of etf and when someone wants to and this is a very advantageous to the investor because they have a better control over their investment decision at what price point they want to either enter or exit that particular etf or enter or exit the market uh, if you look at currently uh, as a investor i will have to log on to each and every website of uh, different different amc to check that uh, nav uh, which is little bit cumbersome uh, apart from that uh, if you look at the various etfs which are currently available on the market except nifty or maybe bank or a uh, liquid etf uh, other etfs are not that li- uh, liquid that is volume of uh, uh, other etfs are very low on the market which is leading to the higher bid and ask spread and which somewhere uh, uh, ruin the overall experience or overall in, uh, returns of the those particular product uh, this is primarily because of the procedural inefficiencies which market makers are currently facing in terms of settlement cycle of uh, the way normally uh, uh, settlement cycle operates in india plus on top of it market maker also have to provide for the uh, uh, some bit of uh, liquidity cost for infusing or uh, for infusing the liquidity on the exchange with this particular circular uh, or uh, or the latest development sebi has uh, tried to streamline this particular aspect going so for, first of all uh, as of now as per the circular the, all these changes which uh, sebi has suggested this uh, will be implemented from uh, 1st of july so 1st of july uh, you may see consolidated place where inav of all the etfs which are available in india based on various criteria will be available on either uh, sorry nac as well as on bsc platform where majority of the etfs are uh, listed and traded so this is one of the biggest uh, uh, you know challenges which sebi is trying to overcome from the development of etfs and index fund in india as a investor i will have a better uh, uh, control or better uh, 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 consolidated pl- place where i can evaluate and see if the trading price or the price at which i am either buying or selling the etf are near to its uh, fair value or near to its indicative net asset value at that point of time and based on the uh, bid and ask spread available at that point of time i can take the decision of uh, buying and selling those etfs uh, apart from that currently in most of the etf cases the unit creation size that is the lot size of those etf if someone wants to create or redeem the unit directly with the amc was a uh, little uh, over 50 to 60 lakh rupees uh, slightly if we uh, if i talk about how exactly this particular mechanism operate 
in that case uh, if someone wants to invest into etf basically they have two option one is of course uh, in in multiple of one unit uh, investor can buy and sell etf unit on the exchange directly on the exchange however if someone wants to invest in a big a uh, lot that is the uh, lot size of about 50 to 60 lakh rupees in that case investor currently has the choice to directly uh, come to an amc and create or redeem those unit uh, so far most of the institutional investors hnis etc used to uh, uh, opt for the second option to lower the uh, bid and ask spread and lower the overall impact of buying and selling the etfs going forward from 1st july onward if this particular circular uh, or the recommendation of this particular circular uh, are implemented anyone below 25 crore will not be able to buy or sell etf directly from the amc only the authorized participants or the market maker will be allowed to create or redeem the unit uh in in lower denomination of or or less than 25 crore directly with the amc essentially what this means is those hnis and those institutional investor who were so far direct who were preferring to directly come to the amc will have to route their uh, uh trade or route their buying selling activity on the exchange this will further help the and uh, help to enhance the liquidity of etfs on the exchange and thereby reduction in bid and ask spread apart from that cbi has also mandated not only amcs but also nse and bse that is exchanges to incentivize the market maker to provide the tighter quotes on the uh, uh, market so if you look at the overall broader level uh, uh points or broader level challenges which investor were so far facing for buying and selling etf that uh, going forward will be streamlined and there will be better efficiency in terms of overall availability of the liquidity on the exchange for etfs so going forward uh, uh, because of this changes as a investor as a distributor as a uh, uh, advisor uh, uh, all of us will have a better choice in terms of the efficiency of the product one and two in terms of the price uh, at which i want to buy or sell etf whether those uh, whether those are very near to inev or not and based on that i will be able to take informed decision of buying and selling etf uh, uh, through the secondary market apart from that uh, as we all know tracking error or tracking difference these are the two important aspect when someone wants to uh, uh, take the selection call of uh, investing into particular uh, etf or particular index uh, just to highlight here uh, once as a investor i know that i want to invest into some xyz index and on which etfs and index funds are available a uh, post that which is of course based on my uh, uh, financial goal or maybe uh, my risk appetite once that is decided the second uh, challenge is come to in which etf i should invest or which index fund i should invest and at this point of time the tracking error and tracking difference both are very different i'll i'll uh, just highlight uh, uh, what are they but these two data points are very very crucial and important uh, uh, at the time of selecting uh, etfs or index fund broadly speaking tracking difference is nothing but a difference between the scheme or etf or index fund and its underlying index so for example if let's say if we talk about uh, nifty index in that case if nifty 50 has given let's say 10% return against that if etf or index fund which is tracking this particular index has uh, let's say given either 9% return or 10% return this 1% deviation is called as tracking difference now uh, let me also uh, uh, highlight what is tracking error in case of tracking error these kind of differences are calculated on a daily basis 
and then the volatility of that particular difference by way of standard deviation is calculated. So tracking error is nothing but a standard deviation of daily difference between the scheme return and the underlying index return, whereas tracking difference is the return difference between the underlying in index and ETF or index fund on a particular uh, time to time basis. Tracking error basically shows how efficiently or how well managed uh, that particular ETF or index fund is lower the tracking error, better for the investor. That shows the efficiency of managing these two uh, uh, type of fund. Whereas uh, tracking difference basically shows that exactly how much return I'm going to get in my pocket uh, by way of investing into uh, ETFs or index fund with reference to their underlying indices. Uh, these two critical data points so far were not available on a consolidated base. If we look at uh, many platform aggregators who provide a lot of data with respect to the performance of uh, not only actively managed fund, but also the performance of ETFs index fund, uh, uh, very few of them actually uh, publish tracking error or tracking difference on a regular basis. With this particular circular, uh, uh, there are two changes which SEBI has uh, suggested or SEBI has recommended. One, the annualized tracking error of all the ETFs and index fund has to be uh, available on the website of respective AMC on a daily basis. Apart from that, this particular data has to be published on MFI also. So if you look at uh, currently on MFE, uh, uh, the performance metrics or the returns of the funds which have already completed one year are regularly updated or uh, are updated on a daily basis on MFE website so, uh, through which uh, a client or investor or distributors who want to select particular fund can download that data and based on that uh, do their own analysis and evaluation. Similarly, going forward, the tracking error as well as tracking difference, uh, both the data tracking error on a daily basis and tracking difference on a monthly basis uh, will be available for the investor, not only on AMC's website, but on a consolidated basis on MFI website as well. This will further uh, uh, you know, enhance the, the uh, selection uh, which as an investor I'm trying to make or this will give me uh, through this as an investor i will have the better informed uh, uh, data points uh, for selecting particular etfs or index fund <coughs> so these are the two broader level uh, uh, etfs and index fund related uh, common uh, uh, suggestions or uh, uh, suggestions which sebi has made and this will be implemented mostly from First, uh, first of July by all the AMCs who are currently offering ETFs and index fund in India. Uh, now I request my colleague Anuj to talk about uh, debt fund or the development of debt fund going forward, which is suggested in this particular uh, uh, circular. So handing over to Anuj, uh, uh, I'll just stop sharing the screen. Thanks, Jatan. So uh, Anuj, can you share your uh, presentation? Yeah. Is it visible? Yeah, it is visible. Okay. Uh, so thanks, Jatin, uh, for uh, as in explaining us, uh, shedding light on how passive funds have evolved uh, since the inception and how this uh, guideline would further help them uh, evolve uh, in these uh, in that way. So before I touch upon. Uh, how, uh, what these regulations are and uh, how uh, this would help the industry. Uh, I'll just run you through how the uh, passive debt fund space has evolved over a period. 
So back uh, in 2010, there was just one passive fund, uh, a passive debt fund, right? And uh, the AUM uh, was roughly 500 crores or less than 500 crores. But now, uh, if you look at uh, as of uh, end of April 2022, this AUM has uh, drastically uh, risen to uh, roughly 96,000 crores and it spans across 40 different schemes. Uh, one major uh, turning point was back in 2019 with the launch of Bharat Bond. Uh, uh, before that, the AUM was roughly 2,000 crores and since then it has picked up uh, in a huge way. And hence, there was a, a need uh, for further regulations so that uh, it could help streamline the uh, debt offerings. So uh, earlier, uh, so I'll just run you through what are the existing regulations are, and then I'll touch upon what the new regu uh, regulations suggest, right? So uh, the earlier regulations, there were two different regulations for G second people, which is uh, considered as sovereign. Uh, and there were different regulations for SDL and corporate bonds. So uh, as you might be aware that uh, the debt market is fairly illiquid, right? Uh, within which GSEC and T-bill is uh, much more liquid compared to your SDL and corporate bond market. Hence, uh, the GSEC and T-bill regulation required that uh, the, uh, the fund shall completely replicate the underlying index. But that was not so for the case for uh, SDL and corporate bonds. So uh, the regulation allowed that uh, for SDL and corporate bond funds, right? Uh, they could partially replicate at an issuer level. So I'll just uh, explain you what this waterfall structure was. So say for example, the index has three uh, securities, right? And uh, the fund is unable to buy one of the securities. So in that case, the fund could, uh, if the, uh, that ISIN is not available, in that case, it could buy another ISIN of the same issuer. Even if that is not available, then the uh, fund could buy another ISIN of another issuer from the index and so on and so forth. So this was the waterfall structure that was in place early. There was a single issuer level capping, say, for example, Reliance Industries, right? So Reliance Industries was capped at, the exposure to Reliance was capped at 15%. So, uh, and uh, this single issuer level capping was not uh, up uh, as in, it was agnostic of the ratings. Also, there was no group level uh, capping. So say, for example, if the index had, uh, it could take exposure to all the Tata companies and in varying uh, weightages. So uh, it could take exposure to Tata uh, chemicals. It could take exposure to uh, Tata consumer uh, or TCS. It could do uh, take exposure to multiple, uh, you know, uh, uh, group level uh, companies. And that would have drastically uh, increased uh, risk for uh, the investors. Also, there were no sector level uh, capping uh, earlier. Uh, one major challenge is that uh, passive funds faced was in case of a credit uh, or a rating downgrade, the security was supposed to be offloaded within five working days. So this was one of the major challenges for all the mutual funds. So we look at what are the new regulations. So uh, now the new regulations says that SDL, GSEC, and T-Bill would be treated uh, as one, right? Also, uh, they have made, uh, as in, uh, they have created another segment for complete corporate bonds, right? 100% corporate bonds. And then they have uh, given leeway of hybrid funds as well, which is a combination of uh, GSEC and corporate bonds or, uh, or corporate bonds and SDL or T-Bills. Uh, now, uh, unlike earlier, wherein uh, there was uh, partial replication is still allowed, but now it is at a fund level. So uh, this gives the uh, mutual fund a flexibility as well as they have mentioned how much the fund can deviate from the index. So this is uh, really good and uh, it could help the mutual fund to efficiently replicate the index. Also now there is single uh, issuer capping basis the ratings. So say for example, Reliance Industries is AAA rated. So it can take higher exposure. The fund, uh, fund or the index can take higher exposure to Reliance. But say for example, there is another issuer which has a AA plus rating. In that case, the exposure uh, limit would be uh, capped at maybe 12.5%. So SEBI has also given out uh, how much uh, exposure can be taken at a issuer level, uh, single issuer level. Uh, basis the uh, rating of the issuer. Then they have introduced this group and sector level capping, which is a very uh, good move. 
uh, given that uh, this would drastically reduce uh, the risk for uh, investors in case uh, if there is a default on one of the groups. Uh, and the last part is in case of a rating downgrade, the security can be offloaded in 30 working days, uh, calendar days. So this is uh, good uh, on the part of AMCs because they would be able to, uh, you know, efficiently uh, offload the paper. Now, what would be the positives that would uh, that would be derived out of this regulation? So what we feel is, uh, given that SEBI has given uh, an almost exhaustive uh, list of uh, as in regulations, this would help uh, to streamline the product offerings. Also, uh, uh, within that space, uh, the AMC would be able to innovate, right? Now, what we feel is SDLs, which were earlier treated at par with corporate bonds, now are uh, treated uh, alongside uh, GSEC and TBIL. Uh, as SDLs have virtually nil credit risk and uh, also carry higher yield, so we think that there would be more products uh, that would be based on SDLs. SDLs are basically state development rules. Also, uh, now that uh, there are detailed guidelines, we feel that uh, there would be more products that would be uh, focused around uh, a bit lower rated, uh, lower rated instruments and uh, which are uh, which form the part of the investment grade uh, bonds. So, what would be the key takeaways from this guidelines? Uh, as Jatin uh, mentioned, that uh, uh, as an appointment of market makers will ensure there would be a narrow spread. Uh, the regulations would uh, definitely uh, boost the uh, liquidity on the exchanges. Uh, it will include more transparency uh, as uh, mutual funds have to disclose the tracking error and tracking difference. Also, there would be efficient price discovery and eventually uh, in the debt uh, passive segment, we feel that there would be more innovation and uh, the products would be streamlined. That is it. So uh, if anyone has questions, please post it. No, uh, and we'll be happy to answer. Thank you, Anuj. Uh, so, uh, just to uh, summarize what we discussed so far, uh, as mentioned, uh, broadly speaking, this particular circular or this particular SEBI's uh, uh, directives are uh, covering three broader aspects. One is the market making framework of ETFs in India. Two, the about the development or, or I would say further development of uh, debt based ETFs and index fund in India and three about the performance uh, disclosure of these ETFs and index fund uh, in India. Going forward, uh, because of this changes, uh, uh, there will be a lot of uh, 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 good thing will happen to ETFs and index fund and there will be overall growth of ETFs and index fund in India. Uh, of course, so far also, as we mentioned that now uh, ETF and index fund AUM has already crossed 5 lakh crore, uh, but this initiative or this uh, changes will further propel the uh, that particular growth and we see that in coming days, a lot of investors, not only investors, but uh, distributors, business partner, uh, everyone would uh, uh, give, uh, would like to uh, invest uh, in ETFs and index fund. Uh, here we have the uh, couple of questions from Mr. Suraj uh, uh, Jatwani. Uh, his question is, his first question is related to tracking error. That is, can we, can you please share the tracking error of equity uh, in index and ETF? And uh, do you think 2% tracking error is a challenge in uh, international fund? Uh, first, I will try to cover the first aspect. Uh, if we broadly look at the uh, 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 ETFs and index fund, uh, most of them are currently tracking either Nifty or Sensex. If we look at the Nifty and Sensex based uh, uh, ETFs and index fund in India, uh, on an average, the tracking error is roughly about 50 to 60 basis point. Of course, there is a high variation. Uh, the lowest tracking error would be, uh, this I'm talking about yearly tracking error, uh, the lowest would be about uh, uh, two basis point to roughly about on a higher side at about 90, to 90 basis point to 1%. But on an average, this is uh, the ETFs and index one which are tracking uh, Nifty or Sensex should be in the range of about uh, 
60 to 80 basis point uh, which is quite high so when you are investing into uh, uh, nifty or sensex based either etf or sensex please uh, uh, look for the tracking error data and tracking error as well as tracking difference data and accordingly uh, take the uh, call of investing in particular ETFs or index fund. But uh, apart from Sensex and Nifty, if you look at the other indices because of the various challenges like the liquidity which is available in underlying index. So for example, if I talk about, let's say Nifty 500, uh, uh, which is which uh, one of the product uh, currently available only uh, from us, in that case, striking error is as competitive as uh, uh, any other product. Even if we are invest practically, in even if we are investing into fi five hundred stocks. Apart from that, uh, if you look at Nifty uh, uh, mid cap uh, one hundred and fifty or small cap two hundred and fifty, in those cases also because some of the tail uh, 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 stocks are having little lower, uh, little lower. Uh, uh, liquidity because of uh, because of that, as compared to Nifty or Nifty 500, tracking error of these kind of uh, uh, ETFs or index fund is on a slightly higher side. Having said that, even if it is a, uh, a the tracking error or tracking difference may be on a higher side, plus still uh, at a very low cost, these kind of products are giving you the exposure to overall market or overall sub-segment of that market. So for example, if you look at uh, Motila Loswal Nifty 500 uh, index fund, that is giving you the uh, exposure to about 90, 95% of the market. Whereas if we talk about Nifty uh, mid cap 150 or small cap 250, at least within that entire market, these kind of products are giving you exposure to uh, uh, the mid cap segment or small cap segment. Uh, apart from that, uh, there are uh, other uh, factorial indices also, uh, especially like momentum, low wall, quality, value, etc. In such case also, uh, tracking error is quite reasonable uh, as of now uh, of all the ETFs and index funds which are available uh, in market. As compared to equity indices, tracking error of international fund and tracking error of debt uh, 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 passive fund, that is ETFs and index fund, are on a slightly higher side because of various challenges. Uh, let me just talk, let me first talk about international fund. Uh, 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 Mr. Suraj has asked that, uh, do we think that 2% tracking error is a challenge in international fund? Yes, it is a challenge. Uh, that is primarily because of the time zone difference uh, 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 of various market. So for example, we run uh, uh, the India's largest NASDAQ based ETF and S&P 500 uh, index fund. If you look at uh, the tracking error of these two uh, uh, funds, the it is quite competitive. In fact, the tracking error of our Nifty, uh, sorry, uh, NASDAQ ETF is uh, not even 30 basis point on a yearly basis. And if we look at the tracking error of our S&P 500 index fund, it is also very quite competitive in spite of this time zone difference one and in spite of various uh, uh, difference in the, uh, the taxation aspect at which local level funds are running and international funds are running. So in spite of uh, having these challenges, so far we have been able to uh, uh, so far, we have been able to limit the tracking error within the regulatory limit of 2%. Uh, having said that, of course, for these two products, because these are our flagship products on our international fund, uh, we, we continue and we envisage to keep the tracking error as low as possible. Uh, apart from that, we have uh, 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 IFA index fund. Uh, there we are practically investing into 10 various market and uh, all the 10 different markets are having a different different time zone which again uh, is leading to uh, the uh, tracking error so in those case you may see higher tracking error so this is about on a broader level about the tracking error uh, uh, of uh, uh, equity etfs index fund as well as uh, debt and international fund Apart from that, Mr. Suraj has also asked about why there is so much difference in the INAB and ETF uh, price of international fund. So uh, just to answer that, first of all, thank you for uh, bringing 
this particular question uh, we were talking about market making aspect uh, of the etf so typically uh, the job of market maker or the job of authorized participant is to provide liquidity on the exchange how do they provide this liquidity whenever they, they see there is a high demand from the uh, on the market for the uh, uh, etf unit they simply come to us that is to amc create those unit and supply it on the market on the other hand if uh, they they see that there are high number of uh, supply of unit on the market they absorb those unit and come to us for the redemption and that's how they try to uh, uh, keep the trading price of all the etfs and index fund, uh, sorry all the etfs be it international or domestic etf within their inav now here we all know that uh, because of ongoing restriction of creating or investing uh, in overseas market by mutual fund because of that we had to restrict the direct creation of our nasdaq etf as well we have one more uh, uh, etf which is q50 which is nothing but uh, something similar to nifty next 50 that is the top stocks are uh, 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 tracking uh, are tracked in uh, nasdaq 100 the next 50 stocks are tracked by q50 uh, index uh, if, if you look at these two uh, uh, etfs price versus their inav because authorized participants or market makers are not able to create those unit because of regulatory challenges in terms of overseas investment they are not able to uh, keep the price between the range or between the band and because of that but uh, even after that there is a very high demand of these two etfs on the market so the currently whatever trading or buying and selling is happening is happening between two investors or various investor who, those who are already holding the uh, uh, etf unit and because of C, uh, because of that you see with the very high de deviation of trading price and inav uh, uh, just to give you a little bit of perspective currently it is in the range of about uh, 10 to 12 percent that is the trading price of nasdaq etf is in the premium to its inav or its fair value by about 10 to 12 percent we request all our investors who are buying and selling these etfs on the market please be cautious while uh, 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 buying or selling this etf uh, on the market as of now once this international investment limit will open up this particular difference or this particular deviation will uh, go down and if someone would have invested at such a high premium may have to face uh, 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 challenges in terms of overall returns or overall experience which uh, uh, you are having with this particular product so if you you are uh, you want to invest into these etfs please visit our website that is motilaloswalmf.com there is a tab called etf once you click on that particular tab you will see the uh, inav of all our etfs including domestic as well as international and from there you have to uh, judge that whether the trading price or whether the price at which you want to buy or sell a bit international etf or domestic etf are near to its nav or not and accordingly uh, place your uh, order especially in case of international uh, 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 etf please place the limit order and not the market order this will uh, uh, help you save on the overall uh, 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 return which you are expecting from this particular product. Uh, apart from that, uh, uh, there is one gentleman, anonymous gentleman who is asking about whether uh, uh, Mutilal has a debt fund. Yeah, we do have a uh, uh, we do have that uh, uh, ETF which is tracking five years GSEC, uh, and and we are actually planning to launch a couple of more product on that side. 
uh, 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 under a passive uh, bouquet that is either ETF or index fund. Of course, the, the new regulation will uh, further help us to uh, offer a better and efficient product on our debt side also. Uh, uh, Anuj, there is a question for you on uh, that side. Uh, Mr. Ajay is asking whether this will help in uh, uh, development. Uh, of course, this will help in development of uh, ETFs and index one, which are based on uh, uh, debt indices or debt market. But whether this will help in the development of overall underlying debt market also or not, in terms of liquidity and uh, other aspects. Right. Uh, so we do feel that uh, this would help uh, in terms of uh, you know promoting liquidity in the secondary market uh, as more and more funds would be uh, uh, start tracking. So uh, we expect that the liquidity would uh, increase drastically. But that would be out in the future and not immediately. Okay. Uh, thank you, Anuj. So uh, with this, I think uh, there are very few more questions. Uh, there, uh, there are no more questions. Uh, we can uh, wrap up the uh, session very quickly. Uh, the, as, as we mentioned, uh, broadly speaking, this circular will definitely help the overall development of ETFs and index fund in uh, India, uh, we all know, I mean, many of us would know that uh, in global market like US, out of top 10 traded securities, almost six to seven are ETFs. That much ETFs and index funds are popular uh, uh, in, in US market and other markets. Uh, hopefully with this particular ETF because of because it will help in the overall development of passive funds including ETFs and index fund plus FOFs etc not only domestic but international and that also uh, will further help in uh, uh, promotion and uh, aw creating awareness about uh, these kind of low cost product. Uh, thank you everyone for joining this particular call and if you have any kind of query, please uh, feel free to reach out to us. You may write to us on uh, customer care at mutilaloswal.com uh, 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 if you have any kind of query, uh, not only regarding this particular uh, 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 circular, but in general, if you have any query related to ETFs or index one, we'll be more than happy to uh, answer those queries and uh, create, create awareness around uh, this kind of product. Uh, thank you once again. Thank you very much for attending this call. Uh, happy investing.